Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by Racing Post Members Club. The final classic or British classic of the season is upon us. The St. Ledger is here. My name's Sam Hart, taking you through the weekend's action. We've got four races from Doncaster to get to, including the big one, the St. Ledger. And then we have a, a couple of races to look at from Chester, with a competitive looking handicap there as well. We are on YouTube now, those who watched last week, excellent response to the show last week, 6,000 of you watched it online, we had over 80 people like the video, let's see if we can do the same, get 75 plus likes on this week's video, do subscribe if you haven't already and get involved in the comments. Who have I got on this week's show? I've got Racing Post tipster, Robbie Wilders is back with me and a new face to those who haven't been on the Racing Post YouTube channel, Jonathan Pearson. Johnny, are you looking forward to this week? Yeah, you know, absolutely ecstatic for the for the St. Ledger this weekend. Can't wait to see um, how it pans out. Yeah, it's a really fascinating race. Aidan O'Brien with four horses currently in the race. And Robbie Wilder's back with us, not in the office today, Robbie. Usually we'd see you in the office, but you're, you're tuning in from Maidstone, is that right? I am, yeah. I've got a couple of uh, family obligations this week, Sam. So you'll be you'll be seeing me much more again from next week onwards. And there we go, Robbie, back in the office. I'm sure you see him on plenty of shows going forward as well. Like I say, we've got six races to get through this week, not as many as last week. We had quite a long show last week, so it should be a, a fast preview here. And we'll kick off with four races from Doncaster, and the first of which is the 150 there on Saturday. It's the seven furlong Betfred Champagne Stakes for the two-year-olds, where Rosalian tops the market at 8-15, to 15, Iberian 7-2, Mountain Bear is 14-1, to 1, Sunway 16-1, to 1, and the outside of the lot is Power Mode at 40-1 to 1 for the Alice Haynes Stable. Now, Robbie, I was quite impressed by Rosalian on King George Day, um, where he won the listed race. He's obviously two from two, a short price favourite to, to kick off the postcast this week, but should be winning this, you'd think. Yeah, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? Um, he was really impressive, Ascot, as you point out. Al Muzmak, who he beat easily there, has so obviously come out and won a listed race. The form looks good. I don't think this is a, a brilliant running by any means. Uh Iberian, yeah, he ran quite well at Google, but he's going to have to step forward quite a bit to give Rosalian a, a match, I'd say. Uh, the only interesting thing is probably the ground. He's never raced on ground this mm. slow. But the fact that he's running probably suggests that Hannon thinks he's going to be fine on it. He's quite closely related to the damn Ream 3, who's produced a lot of horses who go on any ground, the likes of Third Realm, the likes of uh, Kate Byron. So, yeah, I think he's going to be too good. He's just got that bit of star quality that I'm not sure the rest of these have. Yeah. Johnny, we heard the the ground there mentioned by Robbie, and it has gone soft there. The, the opening day, we're recording on the opening day of the St. Ledger Festival. It is going to be fascinating. Obviously, Frankie Dottori made a decision on who he'll be riding in the Ledger based on the ground. Uh, have you had to kind of reevaluate each race knowing that it is now soft ground? Uh, the fact that it's soft ground's thrown a lot more questions than I, than I would have liked to have had to answer. But I think hopefully we've got we found a few winners. And I'd have to agree with Robbie on the in the first race here. Um Brasalian should just be a class above these and what we've seen so far. Some way might improve. It's interesting. He's got tongue tied on for the first time, obviously having disappointed last time at uh, Ascot. But still still don't see him being able to match Rosalian. Yeah, Rosalian looks top class. Uh, a potential Guineas prospect, 2,000 Guineas prospect for Richard Hannon uh, moving into his three-year-old campaign. But short price favourite to kick off the postcast. Now, there's definitely not going to be a short price selection in the next race, which is the 225 at Doncaster. This is the five and a half furlong Betfred Portland um, Heritage Handicap here. It's a class two event, and the favourite here, Call Me Ginger, is eight to one. So as open as it gets, Chipstead get it, Happy Romance, and Kings Lynn, along with McInara, twelve to one. Abrahama Gold, Anaf, Badri, Intrinsic Bond, fourteen to one. Sixteen bar. Johnny, you can uh, kick this race off. Not an easy one. I mean, there's, there's easier handicaps to go through and try and find the winner, but. And there's obviously a number of interesting horses. Lots of these are tried and tested at the level. The one that I've picked out that I think could run very well is Kings Lynn mm. for Andrew Balding and Sheen Murphy. Obviously, excluding his run at the start of the season and at Goodwood last time, both of which were on heavy ground, he's been in very good form this season. You know, two, three starts back, he was behind St. Lawrence. He ran an absolute cracker in the Group 1 
most recently. And if, if he can reproduce those forms and get over what ha- whatever went wrong at Goodwood, I would be very much expecting to be in the frame at the finish. Mm, yeah, Kings Lynn, 12-1 to 1 for the Borden Yard. Oshie Murphy jocked up to ride. Robbie, five and a half furlongs, soft ground, big sprint handicap. Who are you with? Yeah, it sounds like Johnny Boy's been reading my notes because I quite like King Glenn as well. Um, he has form figures of 1, 2, 1, 8 at Doncaster as well. I like horses that go well at the course. The 8 came over 6 furlongs on heavy ground. I don't think he quite stays 6. He's very versatile. I don't think he quite stays 6 on heavy. And certainly he's coming off the back of a heavy ground effort in the Stewards' Cup last time. He was down the field there, but... Yeah, as I say, he doesn't quite get home, and he was certainly on the wrong side of the track. So, off mark of 104, I think he's he's definitely still quite well treated. You do see a lot of these handicaps taken out by top weights nowadays. We saw Equilatra do that at York under Jamie Spencer. Uh, I'll throw in Happy Romance if it dries right out as well. Uh, with Alec Volkansky claiming five, she's effectively running off 97. She's a Group 1 filly at her best. Uh, last seen in the King Stam on Bradsell. Uh, it's just the ground I worry about of her, but there's definitely a race in her, a handicap race in her. Now she's dropped her mark one or two. Okay, yeah, a couple mentioned there, but the gents are fairly sweet on Kings Lynn, twelve to one, a fair each way price in the Portland on Saturday. We move on now to a Group Two race, the three o'clock at Doncaster, which is the seven furlong Betfred Park Stakes, um, where Spycatcher well supported for the Carl Burke Yard, thirteen to eight favourite. Audience is three to one. Sandrine is four to one. Biggles is 6 to 1. Jumby is 12 to 1. And Pogo, the outsider of the six, 25 to 1. Robbie, I was actually going to be tempted, almost giving away something here, but I was going to be tempted to nap up Spy Catcher this week. I saw the horse at around 11 to 4, 5 to 2, and 4. This is a great price, but the money has just poured in for this horse after a couple of really decent runs in France. What did you make of this one? It's an interesting race. Um, I looked at it at the start of the week thinking it was going to cut up. It has to a certain extent, but. You've still got a few horses in there who like fast ground. Uh, Audience, we know he does. Pogo is another one. Jumbie loves fast ground. And while Sandrine handles it a bit slower, I'm not sure over the seven. I think over the six, she, she's far more slower. So for me, I've got this between Spycatcher and Biggles. And at the prices, I'm going to stick with Biggles. I put him up in the anti postman at the start of the week. The light see it cut up, but this horse is actually quite closely matched with Spy Catcher on their run in the Victoria Cup at Ascot. There was only there's only a quarter of a length between them. Biggles was second, Spy Catcher was third, and they were only three pound difference that day. Um, I think Biggles is just the kind of horse that Ray Beckett does well with. He's he's an improving sort. The ground's too quick for him at Ascot last time when he was a well back favourite for the international stakes. He lost soft ground. He ran really well at this meeting last year behind Baradar, who looking back, was completely thrown in. Uh, Ryan Moore's up. I think if you give me 6-1 to one Biggles or 13-8 spy caps, there's only one way I'm going. OK, Biggles 6-1 to one for Robbie there. Johnny, for yourself in this one, with the favourite or against? Um, I, I was against, but then the ground made me have a complete rethink of things. And while spy caps obviously been in tremendous form, it wasn't the strongest of, of group ones. He was second in most recent in France. And audience to me second behind Kinross at York is is much stronger form but audience on ground slower than good as we saw at uh, Goodwood it just doesn't seem to, to have the same uh, effect for him and he just doesn't seem to seem to go as well on it and so for that reason I'm actually going for spy catcher purely on on the ground because I think they're not to, you know they're fairly close in match, so I think the ground will be make all the difference for this race, and Spycatcher will end up with the upper hand. Yeah, look, Spycatcher, the price has completely gone. I do think he will go and win this race, but yeah, the price has collapsed from from earlier on Thursday morning. So yeah, Spycatcher for myself and Johnny and Robbie with Biggles at six to one. Let's move on to the big one then. The three thirty five at Doncaster on Saturday is the Betfred St Ledger Stakes over a mile and three quarters. And the market currently looks like this. Uh, great, uh, sorry, the Jeffrey Freer Stakes winner arrest is 100 to 30. The Great Vulture winner, uh, 4 to 1 continuous. Gregory, the Ascot Gold Cup here, are also 4 to 1. 
for His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen, Desert Hero, 5-1. to one. The Melrose winner, supplemented for the race, Middle Earth, 8-1. to one. Godolphin, Soul Entry, Chess Piece, 12-1. to one. Then we've got Aidan O'Brien's other three in here, Tower of London, 12-1. to one. Alexandropolis, 28-1. to one. And Denmark, 50-1. to one. Johnny, this is a, it's been a puzzle for me all week, this. It's not been a, an easy St. Ledger. It's not really been a standout. You can make a case for probably the top... Well, five or six in the betting here. It, like I say, it's not been easy. But who have you landed on? Uh, well, initially, a while back, I thought I thought White Birch would win the race. So when they ran him over twelve furlongs again last weekend, and he was finishing like a train never nearer yet again, it was obviously quite disappointing to see. But from the from the field we've got, I, I, a rest shouldn't be favourite. Frankie de Tori said he's riding a rest and he's end up favourite. So that helps out the market regarding Continuous and Gregory, who have, to me, got the got the best form in the book between them. Gregory, last time I thought the ride by Frankie de Tori was not one of his finest moments, going far too hard from the front, wanting to lead and dictate things, and it you know it caused all sorts of issues. But he, was, he wasn't stopping at the line, but obviously he wasn't running with the same fluency as Continuous at that point. I think under a more patient ride, under Kieran Schumark, Gregory might get back to winning ways. For all, for all continuous, was impressive. I think Gregory's got every chance to reverse the form here and, and upset the upset both Frankie and Ryan Moore. Yeah, Gregory, 4-1 to one currently. I remember uh, after the Great Vulture, Tom Siegel came on to win the no, and the first thing he said is, do not give up on Gregory for the St. Ledger. He was quite keen to to follow up um, after York. So, yeah, Gregory, 4-1 to one for Johnny there. Robbie, look, I think what Johnny said is right. Arrest having Frankie Dottori on board, that is the reason this horse is favourite. If Frankie Dottori had chosen Gregory, you'd imagine that would have been flip-flop back with Gregory as the favourite for the race. Do you... It, it, would you follow in the money here with arrest, or are you against arrest? Yeah, I'm on I'm on arrest anti-post. Um... I got on before the gamble at the start of the week, but you would have to say he's probably, I think he's about a fair enough price now. I think he should be favourite because of his form on soft ground. Mm. Uh, you know, he's got an RPR of 117 on soft, beating the Irish Derby runner of Adelaide River. Well, not beating him, smashing him, really. Uh, he's, he's such a ground dependent horse. And while Gregory, I get what Johnny's saying, he wasn't given the best ride at York, and he's still a very interesting horse. He's not encountered a surface like this, so I'd be. I'd be slightly wary, and the fact that Tory has job and ship does look quite significant. And if you crab an arrest as well, he's you know he's the second highest rated runner in the field. Like there's there's plenty of good form there, and I, I thought he was really impressing the Jeffrey for it. So I'll probably have it between arrest and Gregory. I'm not sure about continuous on this ground. I think Gregory's the best horse out of those two in that race. But uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'll stick with arrest, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily want to go back in at the revised prices. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to... I mean, we haven't really mentioned continuous too much there. Obviously, Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore, they can do nothing wrong at the moment. But his sire is obviously a Japanese sire um, who loved quick going um, in Hearts Cry. And the dam fluff, not being the most exciting of dams, but did like a bit of cutting the ground. And look, he did win as a two-year-old at Song Clue on, on very soft ground. Whether the form of that is that strong and whether he was just too good on the day, I don't know. It, is it just the worry that he's just never encountered it past uh, being a three-year-old since becoming a three-year-old? Right? Yeah, well, it's, it's it's the ground and the trip combined because you know you, you're talking if you're talking heavy ground over a mile a mile four, it's a different test to heavy ground on a mile six and a half. So he, he could he could run very well to a point, but I'm looking for a, a real grinder and and the rest certainly proved he was that in the Jeffrey for it. So it's a combination of the two. You can often the gate sort of slower ground over a shorter trip, but in a marathon like this, I, I don't quite see it. Yeah, and Johnny, I know before we came on on air here that you were um, contemplating whether to go with Gregory or Continuous in here. Now, the one thing with with Aidan O'Brien's runners is they're they're actually all owned by Smith, Magna, Tabor, and Westerberg, so all running in the purple colours. Could it tactically work out really nicely for Continuous? Do you think there's a plan in place? I mean, there's he's got there's three others in there. To, to try and make the running for for um, continuous, you think, and obviously given what happened last time, you think they'd want a pretty strong pace on. And then 
you just need to look back to the Irish Champion Stakes on Saturday, just gone when, once again, they set the race up perfectly for Ryan Moore, sat on Gus Road and just in behind the leaders in the perfect position. So it's definitely what you'd imagine they'd try and do, but it's, I don't think it's going to be that easy to, to do it. And I think, I think a few in there would be quite happy taking a lead off of them. They just don't want to get caught too far back. Okay, yeah. I mean, looking through the rest of the market in here, Desert Hero is another one that we could talk about, Robbie, because he won on on soft ground at Goodwood in the Gordon Stakes, didn't he? I mean, it'd be some story to see His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen have the winner of this classic. Obviously, Tom Markarn, this was the, the first classic that he ever landed with Galileo Chrome a couple of years ago. What what do we make of Desert Hero's chances? Yeah, he's definitely got a chance. It all depends on how he takes that step up and trip. I mean... He, I mean, he, he, was, he nice wasn't. Sl- he, I mean, he was staying on well, wasn't he? In the, no, in the Gordon yeah, he, he, he was. He was. Yeah, and he is quite closely matched, obviously, with chess piece on that form as well, who, yeah. who you could give us a, a chance to. But it's just again, Goodwood is obviously an easy track to handle. I know the ground's soft, but Doncaster that long straight a mile six and a half. I just, I just feel like the only one really without question marks over the trip at the moment on the the ground is a rest. Okay, yeah, a rest looks pretty solid, according to Robbie. Um, I think John Gosden, it seems like John Fady Gosden, that's the way to go in this with with Johnny also fancying Gregory in the race. So that's the races from Doncaster all sewn up. We will be back shortly after this advert uh, with a preview of the races from Chester. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. Yeah, there you go. You can get your first two months of Members Club for £9.99. It's worth doing so. Get the code SUMMER. All the link is in the description. You're back with us for the Racing Postcast then. Sam Hart, Robbie Wilders and Johnny Pearson taking you through the weekend action. There's two races from Chester that we are going to be covering. The first of which is their opener on Saturday, which is the Tote Stand Cup Stakes, a listed race uh, over a mile and a half. This comes at 2.05 there and Blue Stocking tops the market at 5-6. to six. Al Kareem is 13-2. Uh, Madara is seven to one. Sea of Roses ten to one. Empress Wu fourteen to one. Lastronome is sixteen to one, and Alba Long is uh, Long is forty to one. Um, this race here now, Blue Stocking has obviously been in a a very strong Ribblesdale Robbie with Warm Heart coming out and winning a couple of uh, Group One races since Group One and Group Two since, and obviously the second Lumia Rock winning last weekend over in Ireland. What I can't understand is the fact that Sea of Roses here, there's such a big price comparison between Blue Stocky and Sea of Roses based on that Ribblesdale form. How did you look at this one? Yeah, it's quite an interesting take. Um, I do think Blue Stocking is, is, probably should be odds on. Um, I've quite liked her this season. I think she hasn't really had a couple of things go away. I think in the Ribblesdale, she was given too much to do from way off the pace. And likewise, again, when Warm Heart beat her in Newbury, I think she, in terms of raw ability, she's not far off Warm Heart. Um, I mean, she finished out of Warm Heart in the Irish Oaks. That only a miraculous performance from Save Last Dance, trading at nine hundred nine nine to one in running, stopped her from winning. So she she has been quite unlucky not to, not to win at least one decent prize this season. Um, I think there is. I think she's fairly priced, but I do think there's one here that is well overpriced, and that's Lastronomy, who's about sixteen to one. Um, this is a stay with Davidson for Hugo Palmer. She's got a very high level of form in France from last year. She's running in Group 1s. Uh, she made all in a Group 2 at Longshop on soft ground last May. And she's drawn in Stall 1. She's trained by Hugo Palmer now, who obviously likes to target this race course. So I could see her going quite well at a, a bit of a price. But um, I'd probably be potentially looking at without a favourite bet for that one. 
Okay, favourite looks pretty solid according to Robbie, but Lastronome 16 to 1 for the Hugo Palme yard. Yeah, like you say, they do love having winners at Chester. Johnny, who did you like in this one? I think, as you know, as you both said, Blue Stocking is the correct favourite and justifies the price she, she's trading at currently. But I'd like to look away from her and try and find some value from something else. Obviously, Sea of Roses has some good form being in behind warm heart and, and chest piece. But the one I've landed on for a bit of an each way shout is Madara for Roger Varian and David Egan. Obviously, earlier on, I obviously looked a really, really good horse on your weather twice before disappointing at, at Haydock last night. But watching it back and just think, can't help but think the ground was, was far too quick for her that day. And with cutting the ground, I think we're c- going to see a completely, completely different filly. And obviously being a full sister to Ben Battle as well, the, the pedigree suggests there's, there's more to come from her. And if she picks up where she left off at Kempton and that Haydock run was just a blip, I think she could really take a step forward and give mm-hmm. her a challenge at a bigger price. Okay, yeah, Johnny, ben, ben Battle, I was looking at her, Ben Battle hated soft ground though, didn't he? Didn't, didn't um, hate it. It, was, it certainly wasn't its favourite. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't <laughs> like good, yeah. But it's, I don't think it's going to be too soft at Chester. You know, we're currently good to soft. I don't think it's going to rain too much more. But I don't think she wants a ground rattling quick as as it was at, at Haydock last time. Yeah, I do. I do. Agree, I do agree with that. I was just in, just looking at her pedigree. She's also related to Fu Rat, who's Group Three uh, mayor a couple of years ago. She didn't really like it too soft. I think mm. I don't know. I, I, I see you say it was too quick for a Haydock last time, but uh, I, I worry if it is on the softer side uh, at Chester. Okay, there we go. So a couple of horses potentially to take the favourite on with. The favourite does look very solid, but Madara for Johnny Pearson, that's 7-1, to one, and Lastron at 16-1 to one for Robbie Wilders. Moving on to the final race that we're officially going to be covering on this week's postcast, which is the Candom Hells Handicap, over a mile and a quarter, a Class 3 event where Sweet Reward is the 9-2 favourite. First impression is 5-1, to one. Box to Box 6-1, to one. Barishnikov is 8-1, to one. Southern Voyage, 17 to 2, Whisper 9 to 1, and double figures about the other four in here. Johnny, uh, an open handicap at Chester. Could be all about the draw in here. Who do you like? Um, I can't say it's the, the favourite race I've ever looked for in, in my life. <laughs> but, um, and the draw the draw at Chester has caused me real, real issues here. I think if it wasn't for the fact that box to box is drawn in still 10, I'd be re- really keen on his chances. You know, course and distance winner. Cut on the ground, they'll have no issue with. But it's a horse that likes to lead, and he's drawn 10 at Chester. You know, in order to get to the front, is he going to then burn himself out? Or is he not going to find much sitting in behind? So, one that so I, like, I like his chances, but I think he might struggle with, with how it all pans out for him. And you've got Sweet Reward. Obviously, he's been in very good form, but I can't. I, 92 is a bit short for a horse. I think he's going to struggle to defy a career high, high mark here. I think the one that I've landed on is first impression. One over course and distance last time out. Drawn six, which isn't too wide. And I think if he gets a nice set in behind the lead, he's going to go very, very close to winning this. OK, yeah, first impression, five to one. Jason Hart taking the ride there. Yeah, Robbie, a couple of course and distance winners in here. You always say Chester is a horses for courses kind of course and are you with a, a, a course winner yeah I mean and the draw is obviously such a big thing yeah. uh, I was like Johnny I was quite keen on box to box just looking at his profile likes to make the run in uh, good chest form good soft ground form but then I probably should have looked and realised before all of that that he was drawing a stall 10 so he's going to he's going to struggle to make it from there um, so I think for me it's, it's going to be a race I, I sit out to be honest um sit out and uh, enjoy some better punts across the day. There we go. There's no harm in sitting out at some of the race on the postcast. Robbie often does it, but if you haven't got a strong opinion, there is no point in giving one. So that is all the main action covered from ITV Racing. We're going to be back shortly after this to find out what else the other gents fancy. Do you want over £500 in free bets? Well, the best free bet offers are now all in one place. Head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets where you can find all the offers from your favourite bookmakers. Click the link in the description to find out more.
Welcome back to the Racing Postcard. Sam Hart, Johnny Pearson and Robbie Wilders taking you through the weekend winners. We've covered our main races from ITV. We're now going to look to see what else the gents fancy elsewhere as well as getting their naps of the week. And now Robbie informs me that he hasn't got uh, a bet elsewhere this week other than potentially his nap. But, Johnny, you've got a couple for us. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got one at Gowron Park at 3.30 in the in the group three, um, in the group three Phillies and Mares race. And I've landed on American Sonia, and I think she'll actually mm-hmm. finally be able to break her, her group duck. She, she ran very well last time, got in a battle with Red Riding Hood and came out on the wrong side of things. But just looked a little bit awkward when she hit the front that day. So they've, they've put, they were applying first time cheat pieces which obviously if they have the desired effect and help her focus more, I think she she really could take another step forward for it and be very difficult to beat. It's it's not an easy task. You've got Sounds of Heaven in there. He was, he was um, third behind Tahira in the Coronation Stakes at Royal Ascot, which is obviously very good form. But I feel she was probably slightly flattered that day by it being a slowly run race. And I think I don't think she'll... Um, She's actually as good as, as that result made her seem. So American Sonia for me there. And then another interesting race comes in the 1042 at Wed, 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 Woodbine in the Woodbine Mile Stakes. Love it. I don't, know, I don't even oh, ever had a Canadian race covered on the postcards. Not since I've been doing it. I don't know if Robbie's ever on, but this, this could be the first Canadian tip on her. Do you want to be watching racing at 11 p.m. on Saturday night? Oh, if it's well, quality racing, then why not? Like, have you got nothing well, else to do? Yeah, let's hear the case then. Come on. <laughs> Charlie Appleby sending sending over Master of the Seas, who after following a break from being a maiden in in the stars of the year, then went and won at Ascot in July, very impressively by four lengths. Following another break, again, he clearly a horse that goes well fresh. He should be, as we saw in January as well, when he won on on reappearance. I don't think there's any of the of the North American horses in there that are capable of running at his level, and I think he's just going to be too good for everything in there. Okay, ten forty-two on Saturday at Woodbine. It's the Rico Woodbine Mile Stakes, obviously over a mile there. And Master of the Seas for the Charlie Appy Stable, William Buick taking the ride. So a couple to look out for for Johnny there. Uh, let's get the best bets of the weekend then. Last week was exceptional for the best bets. Uh, unfortunately, Graham Robway's nap. I'll tell you what, he got a good run out of 7-1 to one with Nashua finishing third. I napped up Eldor Eldorf in the Irish St. Ledger at 4-1. to one. And David Jennings, fair play to you, sir. 10-1 to one winner with Post Impressionist in the Old Borough Cup at Haydock on Saturday. And he was really, really sweet on that. He gave a, a superb case for that. So... Got to try and match it once again, lads. Robbie, I'll start with you. Who's going to be the best bet this weekend? Yeah, I think um, Spycatcher is going to have his work out against Biggles. I'd much rather bet Biggles at around 6-1. to one. I think he's a cracking bet. Okay, Biggles at 6-1 to one in the 3 o'clock. Sorry, have I even said the race uh, time? Uh, 3 o'clock at Doncaster on Saturday. That's right. I was, going, I was going to cover it for you, but it's fine. The 3 o'clock... <laughs> Uh, at Doncaster on Saturday, which is the Betfred Park Stakes. Uh, Biggles currently 6-1 with Ryan Moore booked aboard. Johnny, who's the best bet this weekend? Uh, for me, it's going to be American Sonia in the 3.30 at Garen Park. Okay, no I think price she currently. But should be American. too classy. All right, American Sonia currently, uh, there's no price available, but we'll see what price that horse goes off. Hopefully a winner for Johnny there. And I've got to try and match things. I'm going to go for a St. Ledger double. I'm going to try and find the winner of the St. Ledger. And I do think that Continuous might just be class above and an improving horse. I'm not too worried about the, the pedigree of this horse. I do think this horse will handle soft going. I think the race will be tactically run to suit. I think he's, a like I say, an improving horse. I think a rest is just underpriced because of Frankie taking the ride. I get we're going to have soft ground potentially. But 4-1, to one, look, it's another 4-1 to one selection in a Ledger for me. But Continuous... Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien with another big winner. So that's it for this weekend. Last week we had no time to really kind of talk for anything else. But Robbie, what are your plans leading into the weekend? Busy? Yeah, I'm obviously back in Maidstone. Uh, got a got a fancy dress party on Saturday night um, at me auntie's house. Uh, are you cut going as? Are we allowed to know? <laughs> yeah, you are, mate. I'm going as uh, going as Paul McCartney. Oh, lovely. 
Yeah, got me uh, got me Sergeant Pepper orange jacket uh, from Amazon on, on route. So uh, yeah, should be should be a special night. So we'll probably be able to share an image on a postcast next week. Uh, be careful who you send that to. Robbie Wilder's dressed as Paul McCartney. And Johnny, what's the plans this weekend for you? Uh, looking at the weather forecast, I think it uh, calls for a barbecue sat in the sun. Um, Watching the racing? Oh, it's raining. Racing will be on in the background. <laughs> is, it, is it raining this weekend? I was going to where, say. Where, where are you based, pal? <laughs> it's meant to be sunny, isn't it? No, it's not, is it? I, I mean, I hope so, because I've got this deal on Saturday night, but I, I thought the weather was meant to be pretty poor. No, I'm pretty, it's, it's looked good for the last three days when I checked it. So I'm, yeah, I've got 26 degrees and sunny. That'll do, isn't it? So, there yeah. Barbecue really and breakers. racing for... What are you barbecue. doing, Sam? Yeah, I've got plenty going on this weekend, Robbie. Um, I have got In The Know tomorrow night, producing In The Know. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Ross Briley, Maddie Playle, Tom Siegel and David Stevens. They'll be giving you all the winners from Doncaster, hopefully. And then I'm off to Doncaster on Saturday morning. We've got a live What A Shout show. Emma Spencer, Paul Keeley, Keith Melrose and Matt Holmes from Betfred. Um, as well as a special interview with James Dore. He'll be talking all things about chess piece, his big ride in the St. Ledger. Um, so it'll be my first time at Doncaster Racecourse. I've never actually been to Doncaster Racecourse. So looking forward to that and looking forward to watching the final classic of the season. As always, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, do get involved, like, comment, subscribe. Do share this video if you haven't already. Those listening on audio platforms, our regular audience, thanks for listening. As always, do gamble responsibly and enjoy the weekend. 